same Bible with you this morning. Let's look in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders attain a good report. Through faith we understand that the world is framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were made of things which do appear. And by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, he was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. They it come to think God must believe that he is, and he is the reward of him, but it was when seek him. Yeah. Thank you, Amen. I love the faith chapter. I love to read. I love to preach on it. I love to. Uh, Learn from the faith chapter. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Amen. We uh, remember our sister this morning, Tamara, such an anointed woman of God, so powerful. Uh, and uh, she'll be great with in this ministry because she was a vital part of this church. She would come in here with sunglasses on every Sunday and leave them on. <laughs> Wearing high heels with the preacher, and she was stuck in the 70s. I'm kind of stuck in the 80s. I'm born in 67, but the 80s was our time. But she was such a great woman of faith. Amen. And as, as I speak about the faith chapter, I think of her. How she would come to me many times and just uh, tell me, believe God, trust God. When she first started coming here, she. Uh, couldn't get a job because she was a dentist. And she had lost her practice. She couldn't get a job. They would tell her she was overqualified. But she would bring a handful of change and put the offer. Every time she came, she put something in, although she had nothing. But before she passed away, she was had been back in this practice for several years. And God had blessed her financially. And she tied on everything that she had. That, and she would never give her testimony because she wasn't boastful. But there were weeks her tithe was more than everybody else in the church. We never told that on her because she didn't want, she was never one to put it out there. But she trusted God with a little. And she trusted God with a lot. Amen. God will only give you what he can trust you with. And what he can trust you with. Amen. But such a testimony, and I long for her to tell where God had brought her from. Uh, and I can't think of the faith chapter unless I think of her. And today, faith is a great thing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says, and I don't have all this together, we will. I don't have that brother Mike. I think this is about ready to wear out and say it. 15 years old. No. At least it said he didn't try to sit. I might before I was over. But, uh, by the way, this is what happened when you play, play big frog with a three year old and you're 54 years old and jumping over a roll of uh, Christmas paper. I thought Papa could do that. I done it three times and couldn't hardly walk the next day. At least done it once if I fell backwards. I'm glad she didn't do it two more times. But uh, I had faith I could do it, and I did. It didn't work out in the end. But uh, faith, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. It's impossible. And our faith has been challenged uh, in the last two years as the body of Christ. We've been challenged to believe God. You can't depend on, and I'm not going to get political here, Maybe I am, but you can't depend on nothing That's right. that comes from D.C. Amen. Left, right, or in the middle. Right. I don't trust nobody anymore. Amen. Amen. Can't go with something hurt your feelings. Come on. Now, my faith is not in the White House. 
seed is the substance, substance of something that's tangible, something that I, I can touch. Though we can't touch heaven with our hand, we can touch it with our heart. Amen. We can believe and know that it's there. The old song says it's going to be worth it after all. And I think about Cameron and, and his grandmother that passed away this week and, and Robert's mother who passed away. And they were all saints of God. And they had faith that heaven was real. They believed that heaven was real. Though they never seen it with their eyes, they seen it with their heart. And, and they knew it was real. And now they stand in that place in which they believe. That's why we may be one of those who dance with me in the grave when Jesus comes back. Yes, your body will. But the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be I want to please God more than anything else in my life. I want to please Him. 
I like to preach my family to get an end. Boy, that I'll preach God. I'm going to be lucky to have you, baby. So, if you have a vision, you've got to have faith to push that vision. you got to see beyond your current circumstances. And there's some scripture I've been thinking about for the last few days. And it says, I forget those things which are behind. Right. I reach for for those which are ahead of me. Amen? That was Paul said, this one thing I do. I forget those things which are behind me. I reach or I press forward to those things which were before me. Some of you are still stuck in 2020. You're still stuck on the first time you heard the word COVID. Can I get a witness? Amen. You're still stuck on the time the family member of yours passed away with it. Are you in the hospital with it? And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you're stuck in a place of fear and you're afraid to leave. You're afraid to move. You're afraid to go anywhere because fear has set in. Let me tell you, friend, we need to forget those things which are behind us and we for those things which are ahead of us. 2021 has been one of the hardest years of our life. But I'm not going to let it determine the rest of my life. I'm not going to let it determine tomorrow and the next day. I forget those things which are behind me. I got news for you. 2021 may have been the hardest year of your life. But guess what? Look at the calendar. You made it. You made it clear. Faith is a 
is up to the next hopeful. Spiritually. I'm hoping to see my family saved. I'm hoping to see this church finished before uh, the middle of February. I'm hoping to see many more souls saved in 2022 than we've ever seen before. I'm hoping to see you healed. I'm hoping to see this chapter set for me. I'm hoping for those things. But the Bible says that he has hope of all men most miserable. I have more than hope. I have faith. I gotta attach something to my hope. Amen. I attach my faith to what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to see great things happen this year. But I attach my faith and I base that on Jesus Christ and on His Word. If I'm hoping for something, then I pray about it and I say, Lord, now I've got to, I say this all the time when I'm talking to the Lord, I say, Lord, it's all you. It's every bit you. All I'm, all I'm doing is believing and doing my part. But if it happens, it'll be you. Amen. It's all Him. Amen. It's all Jesus Christ. Do you know that God can do all of this without our help? But He chooses to let us be a part of the winning of souls. He chooses to let us be a part of seeing people healed. Jesus chose to use us. Amen. Amen. He chose to let us to be a part of the greatest thing that's ever been. The greatest thing you'll ever be involved in is not your successful business or your money or the crowds you run with. The, most, the greatest thing you'll ever be a part of is the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell us some way of soul about Jesus. Hallelujah. He makes a way. You've been going through some things, maybe you still going through them. You gotta see past your current circumstances and trust God. You gotta see past what the devil's telling you is going on. You gotta see beyond that. Joseph had to see beyond the pit and prison. He was the chosen one, the most favored of his daddy. He said he loved him more than all of his brothers. Because he knew that God was going to use his son. His own brothers had him thrown in a pit, sold him as a slave. He ended up in prison. Uh, the king's wife lied on and went back to prison. But Joseph saw beyond the pit. He saw beyond the two kinds of prison. He saw that God had a purpose. And he became the deliverer of Israel later on in his life. A mirror image of Jesus that would come. David saw beyond the life. Amen. Hallelujah. I listen to lies in our lives. Uh, there's things that talks to you and haunts you. Uh, uh, and depression and anxiety tells you. And fear tells you. Uh, and all these things tells you uh, that you're not going to make it. Uh, but you got to see past your Goliath. Uh, you got to see past your giant. Uh, and say, I'm not listening to you. Uh, I'm trusting God. Uh, I believe we all got a Goliath. Uh, we all got things uh, that are trying to hold us back uh, and stop us. Uh, but we got to see beyond. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's how it says, some hard names, they saw beyond the fire. Now they come to these three guys, and these guys operate in faith. They say, if you don't listen to us and bow down at the given time when you hear the sound of all these instruments, and bow down to the king, then we're going to throw whoever does it in the fiery furnace. Well, these three boys had their faith in the right place. Their faith wasn't in man, but their faith was in God. Boy, never put faith in a man and got let down. Everyone knows. Never put your faith in a man. You can put confidence in him, you can put trust in him, but never cross the line of faith. Amen? Uh, have faith in God, what the Bible says. But they refused to bow. So they come to these three boys and say, All right, if you ain't going to do it, we're going to. Uh, throw you in the fire. They said, you can come as many times as you want. I'm mad with you now, but we ain't going back. Yeah. So, well, we're going to throw you in the fire and you're going to die. And one of them's response was, well, if you do, our God is able to deliver us out of the fiery furnace. But I like what he attached to it. But if you don't deliver us, now he's well able to deliver us. But if in his wisdom, wisdom he chooses not to deliver us, we still want that. Amen. Now that's all faith right there. Yeah. God's able to deliver us from this fiery furnace. But if He chooses not to, then we still want to believe Him. Amen. We still want to trust Him. See, sometimes in life, God 
allows you to go through things and you don't understand. Amen? And they knew that. They knew that sometimes what they wanted wasn't what God wanted. I don't want what I want. I want what He wants. Amen? And I, want, I want to fashion the rest of my life that way. And that's what man wants is what God wants. Amen? It's what God wants for my life. Now that story could have ended and those three boys could have died. But they would still die with a testimony. Amen? These three died for their faith. Is what the Bible went on to say. But as they throw these boys in the fire, as they throw these three boys in the fire, they had faith. And the Bible said that the king said, go look. Look in the fire. Now they went down bound, tied up. And they looked in the fire and said, O king, did not we throw three in the fire? Yeah, you just throw three in there. Well, there's a fourth one. And he looks like the Son of God. Hallelujah. See, some people think that Jesus only showed up on Christmas Day, but he's always been. He is always been. Him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that 
live forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive the glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Hallelujah. There's angels appointed to the throne room. And all they do from all eternity past to whatever their creation was until eternity future that will never end. All they do is cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Some of you are one shout away from the greatest victory in your life. There's power in praise. You know, I preach on that quite a bit. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. There's people who God touches them, they'll never praise Him. You don't just praise God after you've been delivered. You praise Him before you've been delivered. Amen. You praise Him for what's coming. The Bible says that Jesus spoke those things as not as they already were. We're supposed to do the same thing. You've been praying about something, you need to praise Him for it. Begin to give him honor and glory. You've got a lost level who needs to come to Jesus. Praise him for it right now. Give him praise for it. Praise him in the back. Amen. Give him praise, honor, and glory. Give him fight and sickness in your life. Praise him for healing. Already. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I was to see two touch and breathe, shall we not? Amen. You say, what about Tamara? Me and Lisa went down there Wednesday. And she was there in the bed. And with the thing down her, her throat to breathe. And. And to me, she looked prettier than she ever looked. No makeup or nothing. And she looked at us and we totally loved her and was praying for her. And that God had a plan. I didn't tell her God was to get her out of that bed, but I knew that he could. He could have had her sitting here today. I'm going to tell you what, she's healed more than any healing you've ever seen. She looked at us and she just did like this. Like, I don't know. But guess what Jesus did, man? Your loved one who's died in Christ, God didn't let you down. Amen. God didn't let them down. But He gave them a healing like they could never receive on this side. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If we get healed down here, that's great and that's awesome. But it'll, it'll never compare to when He takes us home. Oh, yeah. Amen. Grandpa and Lisa's daddy and my wife's daddy would sit right there where Booty's at. And he got pretty mad. He was a man of faith. Man, he believed God. He believed God for everything. I'd come to Graham and I said he was an elder in the church, served as a deacon for years and Sunday school teacher. And I would come to him and was going through trials in the church. And I said, Graham, what are we going to do? He said, We're just going to trust God. Through three splits in the church. Amen. It happened. You know, every church starts from another church for the most part. That's okay. Not no way. I come to Graham all disappointed and discouraged and said, What are we going to do, Graham? He said, We'll just trust God. Amen. So, sometime before he passed away, a year or two after the church was split that last time, 40 some people left. God got a plan. I don't worry about that no more. Graham come to me and Lisa, he, said, he was treasured also. He said, this is what we have. And the only time I've ever seen him, I, I, I guess really waver. But he looked at me and said, Matt, what are we going to do? Could I say to him? The same remark I got every time I went to him. I said, Graham, we're just going to trust y'all. He looked at me and Graham, and he knew why I said that. Because every time I come to him, he said, we're just going to trust y'all. Friend, that's all we have. That's all we have. This world will let you down. I thought about the term, that, and we've all said it sometime or know. This is a whole different message, so I'm preaching. We've all said this at some time or another. Well, that just ain't fire. I'm going to preach a message one of these days. Life ain't fire. Who ever told you life will be fire? Life's not fire. Amen. Since the Garden of Eden, life's no longer fire. Stuff's going to happen. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. We all got stuff that comes our way. It's in how you deal with it. 
It's the one you, some of the greatest testimonies I've ever seen is from somebody on their deathbed. I'll never remember, and, and Brother Spud mentioned that Linda sang that song, and I'll never remember when Pauline Martin died. Now, Pauline was a, a rough one, and she told you what she thought, and she was the last couple years of her life before she ever got saved. Now, she hurt your feelings for you, but she got saved. And she lay right here in front of this pulpit in a coffin. And I've never seen a smile on a corpse's face like she had. You know why? Because she had something Amen. that was real. She didn't have Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That old song is going to be worth it after all. Amen. Hallelujah. I know we got a ways. I don't know how old we got. It might be over today. And, and the Lord may come back before we get out of this building. And some of us, our bodies may give up. But let me tell you, the, the moment that we see Jesus, we'll say, surely it's been worth it all.
I'll never forget Lisa's daddy Graham. We all we were in. He loved little man. He loved the Lord. Oh, yes. if, you, if you was in the post office and asked for prayer, you better get rid of it. You smacked right there. He laid hands on you right in the post office and prayed for you. Walmart, him and I think Tammy might have been there at this time. Uh, Tammy Birch, they were, I think she was with him or had been in the same line or something and somebody asked for prayer. And guess what, Grandma? He slapped hands on the line. The, the cashier began to speak in tongues to praise the Lord. All three of them began to praise the Lord in tongues right there in Walmart. Can I get with this? They didn't care. But uh, he, he loved to make people laugh. And I don't know what would, what would be his death then. Me and Lisa was there. And they had like seven or eight nurses coming in and out. I mean, they were they on, on point. I don't mean to be political or hurt like Phyllis will say this. But they come in and said, What's your name? He said, Perfect and Brown Bone. And then he had that, that uh, stuff with his body was pulling his body. I said, What's your birthday? And he put it out there and asked him who this and that. And the last question they asked him, and this was when back when Obama was president, they said, Who's the president? He said, If you don't know, I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> but he left with a smile. On his face. He left giving God glory. Amen. He pulled me over and he, he pulled Lisa over and hugged her and loved her because she was an daddy's girl. I have to pay the price for that now. Been paying that price for 38 years. Because he spoiled her so much she stinks and I got to deal with it. Amen. <laughs> but uh, they had a relationship like most moms and uh, most dads and daughters don't have. And he pulled her over and hugged her and kissed her. And he pulled me over and he, he pulled me down to it and kissed me on the forehead. He said, Matt, I love you. You're the best son of all I've ever asked for. We never spoke to him no more after that to speak of. Maybe one more time. And I'll tell you what, if you could see him now, he's got both legs now. Amen. He's not sick anymore. Yeah. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. He had hoped for heaven for 20 some odd years. Daddy had preached about heaven for 40 some years. Uh, Sharon Ann beat cancer for nine years because she refused to die. She said right back there about where Freddie said and, and I was got a big way of preaching one Sunday and I said, well, I said, Sharon Ann, you refuse to die. And she looked at me with big old brown eyes like, what did you just say? That said, they gave her death sentence nine years earlier, or eight years earlier at that time. And she come into this church and I got cancer. She spoke those things that's not as they already were. Right. If you came to visit Sharon and you spoke bloom and doom, she all in, in any way she could, she would be rude, but she would let you know she was tired of the visit. <laughs> she didn't want nobody in her house speaking doom and gloom. Right. She wanted people speaking faith. <laughs> when Graham died, her husband, uh, and she was fighting cancer all this time, a certain person came and this was uh, a good person, but do you, you ever met people that's blue, despairing, agony on me like on Hee Haw? Well, this lady was like that. She ran to the bedroom. Said, Lisa, tell them I'm not here. Lisa, I ain't lying for you. <laughs> so they come in, so where's your mama? Lisa, hiding behind that door. <laughs> so she come out and put on her smile. But she spoke for nine years, I'm not going to die. And God gave her a gift on the day that she passed away. A lot of y'all were put out there from the church. We're at her little park down there in Freeze. And she looked to one in the room and said, It's my last day. Or she told us it's my last day. And she smiled and laughed up to about an hour before she passed away and kind of slipped off. And they ain't got a way to go. Amen. Can't you imagine she beat cancer for nine years? Refused to die. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you today to refuse to take the devil's report. Amen. Refuse to take the enemy's report. Yeah. Refuse to take the naysayer's report. But choose to believe God this morning. Yeah. To believe God for your children. To believe God for your marriage. To believe God for your finances. To believe God for your life. Who will do that today? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. If you're here this morning, you're unsaved. You're the most important person in this church today. Yes, right. If you're not saved, we'd love to see you come to this altar and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Say, preacher, 
We come to visit today, it's all been awful long service. If you can't stand this, you'll never make it to heaven. That's right. Amen. Because we'll be there forever. Amen. And you, you think we got loud, you ain't seen nothing. Man, we get to heaven, that's going to be a loud place. Amen. Not only will all those angels be praising, but we will be. Amen. If you're here today and you're unsaved, we're going to give you the first few minutes to come. And they say, Jesus Christ, to say, Lord, the preachers are here. Would you come to the altar and be ready to pray with you? I mean, by the way, it's a lot of Christ. You know what? Every one of us, if you're saved, you shouldn't be able to leave somebody like Christ. Right. Make it all right. Just help them. Repent of their sins. That's each other their heart. That does it. Amen. It's not complicated. Right. If you're here today and you're unsaved, you're not sure, then you sit out right now. Most important decision you'll ever make in your life is not a financial decision. It's not who you will marry or a job. The most important decision you'll ever make is Jesus Christ. Would you come this morning? Would you come right now? And say, I will be saved today. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I hope everybody's saved this morning. I don't know. But several new people today in this life that don't know where you stand with God. There's three people who know where you stand. Or three personalities, I would say. You know where you stand. God knows where you stand. Maybe you're here this morning, you're a Christian, but you've kind of backed away from God. You've let the events the last two years kind of make your faith dwindle, and your life's just barely glimmering. Would you come around this old side? 